Every nation which practices a democratic system of government is said to be faced with one major challenge. This challenge often comes with the periodic organization of elections. In Nigeria, for instance, the 2019 general elections were said to cost the nation a staggering $189 billion. This goes to show you how much is taken into consideration before embarking on an election. I am Paul Okeke and I welcome you to another exciting time in government class. Today we shall be looking at the topic, types of electoral systems under the theme, political parties, pressure groups and elections. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to list the types of electoral systems, identify the characteristics of electoral systems, and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of electoral systems. What is an electoral system? An electoral system may be defined as a system or process whereby the people of a given nation elect or decide those who would steer or pioneer the affairs of the nation. In other words, we can say that electoral systems may be defined as those processes or systems involved with selecting and voting individuals into political offices. This may also be defined as a set of rules that determine how elections are conducted in a nation and also how the results of these elections are announced. In Nigeria, the body responsible for the conduct and organization of elections is known as the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. This commission was, however, formerly known as Federal Electoral Commission and conducted its first general elections in 1979. There are some characteristics which distinguish and make electoral systems unique. Some of these characteristics may include independence of the electoral body. The independence of an electoral commission is highly important if it is to deliver all that has been stated within a constitution. In other words, electoral commissions are known to perform very well if there is no external influence or control. This is to say that federal and state governments should not have access or have influence on these commissions. The second characteristic of electoral systems is periodic or constant elections. Electoral systems ensure that there is a periodic or constant election in order to be able to change governments peacefully. In Nigeria, for instance, INEC ensures that elections are conducted every four years. This helps to ensure that no government stays in power beyond its stated time in the Constitution. Thirdly, we have universal adult suffrage. What is universal adult suffrage? Universal adult suffrage can be defined as the right of adults in a nation to participate in electoral processes. What this means is that regardless of race, ethnicity, wealth, or social status, every qualified adult in a nation must participate in the electoral process. In Nigeria, for example, the constitution states that those who are 18 years and above are to participate in the electoral process. Fourthly, we have independence of the judiciary. What is the judiciary, you may ask? The judiciary is an arm of government saddled with responsibility of interpreting the laws of a land. The independence of the judiciary plays a vital role in electoral systems. For instance, when political parties present a petition against the electoral body. The judiciary is expected to be non-partisan, and by non-partisan, it is expected to be devoid of influence or external control. This helps the judiciary to pass judgments without favoritism. Lastly, on the characteristics of electoral systems is the equality of all votes. Electoral systems do not only ensure that qualified adults participate in the electoral process, they also ensure that the votes carry equal significance. This means that regardless of race, economic status, or ethnicity, every vote in an electoral system should carry or weigh equal significance. Let us now look at some of the types of electoral systems. Electoral systems differ from one another depending on the nation and the constitution with which that nation operates. However, some of the most popular electoral systems include single member constituency and single vote, single member with preferential vote, single member and second ballot, and 
proportional representation. What is single member constituency and single vote? This is a type of electoral system where the candidate with the highest votes is declared the winner in that election. Nigeria is one of the countries said to practice this type of electoral system. In the Nigerian electoral system, the candidate who secures the highest votes is usually declared the winner in that election. Let us look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of this type of electoral system. One of the advantages of the single member constituency and single vote electoral system is that it provides voters with strong constituency representation. In other words, in this type of electoral system, voters are highly represented. Another advantage of this type of system is that it ensures geographic representation. What this means is that every location has its representation at the center. Although this may be seen as the most viable electoral system to adopt by several nations, it however has some disadvantages. And one of the disadvantages of this system is that it does not enable proportional representation. This is often so because political parties are often seen to field candidates who may not serve the general interest of everyone. Another disadvantage of this system is that it must be withdrawn regularly to maintain an actual population size. What this means is that before an election is conducted in this type of electoral system, a census has to be taken to determine the actual size of a particular location. The second type of electoral system is a single member and second ballot. In this type of election, if a candidate fails to secure majority votes, a second election is conducted. However, a second election is not just conducted for every candidate. This second election usually involves those candidates with higher votes, and those who scored lesser votes are dismissed or retired. This type of electoral system has some advantages. One of its advantages is that it reduces the cost of a rerun. This means that when a rerun or a second election is conducted, not all candidates participate in it. Only those candidates who scored higher votes in the first election are allowed to participate in the second election, thereby reducing the cost of organizing the second election or a rerun. This system is regarded as one of the most credible because candidates who do not stand a chance in a rerun are asked to withdraw so as not to waste resources on campaigns. Although this system is regarded as one of the most credible systems, it however does not go without some disadvantages. One of such disadvantages is that it is not a true representation of democracy. What this means is that in this type of electoral system, those candidates who scored lesser votes are asked to withdraw regardless of whether they were voted by electorates who perhaps believed in their mandates. Another disadvantage of this system is that electorates or voters may change their minds in a rerun. For instance, a voter might vote party A in the original election and change their mind by voting party B in a rerun. This affects the chances of party A winning that election. Going forward, let us look at the third type of electoral system, which is the single member with preferential votes. Have you ever heard of the term? The rich gets richer while the poor gets poorer? Well, if you have, this explains this electoral system. In this type of electoral system, those who scored higher votes have the votes of those who secured low turnouts spread amongst themselves, while those candidates who were unable to meet up with the required number of votes are asked to go home. What this means is that if a person has little votes, the little that he or she has is taken from them and given to the person who secured a large number of votes. It may seem unfair, but this is also a type of electoral system. As funny as this electoral system may sound, it has some advantages. Let us look at some of these advantages. Under this type of electoral system, there seems to be a close connection between a constituency and its representative. Although this may seem like an unfair type of electoral system, it, however, is said to promote a close connection between a constituency and its representative or representatives. The second advantage of this system is that there is wastage of fewer votes as low votes are spread among those candidates who secured high votes. Let us take a look at some of the disadvantages 
of this type of electoral system. One of the disadvantages of this electoral system is that it gives preferential treatment to those candidates perceived to be wealthy. What this means is that only candidates who are said to be rich have a higher chance of winning an election in this electoral system. Another disadvantage of this system is that the votes of electorates are spread amongst candidates they never voted. We can say that in this type of system, an individual or a voter may vote candidate A while his or her vote is given to candidate B without their knowledge or consent. Lastly, on the types of electoral system is the proportional representation. What is proportional representation? The simple definition of this type of electoral system is that it is a system used to elect representatives into the parliament. We can also say that proportional representation is a type of system used to allocate seats in proportion to the votes cast in more than one member constituencies. Let us take a look at some of the advantages of this system. One advantage of this system is that less votes are wasted as people's preferences are taken into account. Another advantage of this is that it ensures continuity in government and also requires greater participation in policy making or formulation. Lastly, on the advantages of this system is that we can say that proportional representation gives minority parties a chance of winning seats in the parliament. Let us now look at some of the disadvantages associated with this type of electoral system. One of these disadvantages is that this system is said to reduce accountability on behalf of elected officials. Some of the disadvantages of this type of electoral system include it is said to reduce accountability to voters as a party not voted for can form alliance with those voted. Also, it has a greater complexity of choice and this sometimes puts voters off. And lastly, it also weakens the links between an elected representative and his or her constituency. We have come to the end of this class, but just before we go, let us take a quick reminder of all that we have learned so far. We define the electoral system as a process and method through which the people of a country determine and elect their political representatives into various political offices. Also, we said in Nigeria, the body responsible for the processes and conduct of elections is known as the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. We went further to say that some of the features of electoral systems include independence of the electoral body, independence of the judiciary, and constant or periodic elections. Lastly, we said that some of the types of electoral systems include single member constituency and single votes, single member with preferential votes, and single member and second ballot. Now let us take these test questions to test our knowledge on all that we have learned so far. Dash can be defined as a process and method through which the people of a country determine and elect their political representatives into various political offices. Option A, proportional system. Option B, electoral system. Or option C, single member. The correct answer to that question is option B, electoral system. We define the electoral system as a process and method through which the people of a country determine and elect their political representatives into various political offices. Question 2. Which of the following is not a type of electoral system? Option A, single member and second ballot. Option B, single member with preferential votes. Or option C single member constituency and second vote. If your answer was option C, single member constituency and second vote, you are correct. The single member constituency and second vote is not a type of electoral system. I hope by now you are able to list the types of electoral systems if you are asked to do so and also discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of each system. Till I come your way next time, bye for now.